right, so a quick update on my anodizing process. I am now able to get perfectly anodized parts. So uh, this is the a lid that I made again and redid the anodizing. So this was the first one I made. And as you can see, there's my thumbprint and there's some fingerprints over here where I contaminated the part. So since then, what I've been doing is leaving all of my parts in a bath of degreaser that is about 100 degrees and I've been agitating the parts while they're in the end of the degreaser just to make sure the parts move around and get any sort of coolant that's left over from machining off the parts so that has done fine this part's still hot it just came out of the sealer I'm using uh, deionized water or distilled water just a hot water bath to um, seal so a boiling bath of water and so that's what that looks like. Again, that's a little hot. Uh, this one I did a couple days ago, so it's nice and cool. Um, again, looking beautiful. Uh, here's some mounts I'm gonna use for like a fog buster and things like that on my machine. Uh, so those came out well. Again, um, the issue was just contamination. So I checked the temperature of the acid, etc. there. That was all good. It was just making sure that I degreased the parts well enough to get the coolant off. And then in this case, not touching them uh, with my bare hands and getting oils from my fingers in there before putting them in the dye bath. In terms of the anodation setup itself, so I changed my acid bath to a tote instead of a five gallon bucket. And that's just because I was running out of room anodizing parts and making sure that they would not touch the cathode. So now I put the cathode at the back toward the end of the bath. I use my wave maker to agitate the acid bath. Um, and then I have plenty of room in here to put multiple rows of parts. Um, so that hasn't been an issue. So that's really it. So we will transition back over here to the sile. And now what we're going to do, we'll see if I can uh, get some footage of me removing this and going ahead and installing it so you can see the connectors back there. Uh, so maybe I can get some better footage. So that's what we're going to do now. Here's my rock lock. It has been working fine. I am impressed with that. So I do. The only thing I hate about the rock lock now that I'm pointing at it is that it's aluminum. I do wish it was steel. Uh, but with that being said, it seems to be holding up and working well. So now let's go ahead and get this coolant manifold on. Alright, so here's the coolant manifold installed on my Sile X7. So we come over here to the right and see all the fittings. So I just have a 3 8 MPT going to a 5 8 barb to a silicone uh, hose. And then here, the only thing I don't like is the Sile uses a 3 4 BSP connector. So I had to use some adapters to a couple to my hose. So what I think I'm going to do, I bought some hex stock. I'm going to go ahead and machine a 3 4 BSP to barb connector. Uh, that way I can just, you know, not use all of these adapters and go straight from the output of the sile 
to the hose to the coolant manifold. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the door. We're going to do a real quick tool change. So you can see that the tool changer does not interfere or the coolant manifold does not interfere with the tool change. Beautiful. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the door. Try not to get myself wet here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the coolant. And so there we go. And of course, let me go ahead and turn that off. So there is plenty of coolant pressure there. And uh, I think that's good. So that's it, guys. It seems to work fine. No leaking. Doesn't interfere with the tool changer. I'm happy with it. Happy with how the anodizing came out. And that's it. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.